you tonight. How are you, uh, Katie and Caroline? Very good, thank you, Beverly. Yes, okay. very good, Beverly, yes. How are great, you? Great. I'm fine, I'm fine. It's a little bit raining over here, but uh, that's good because then, you know, it cools down a little bit the, the hot, warm weather. So we'll send it uh, to us, please. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Fun over here. It's been raining a lot, but we haven't had much sun for a while. I was just saying before we came on, I rushed out for five minutes today and had to come back in because it started raining again. So more sun would be good for us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. And today we are going to talk about the ascension that we are living at the moment. Um, I will say that on my research, I found out that there was two attempts for us to ascend in 5D, but uh, it didn't happen because the people with the sea wall that we cannot say uh, was able to um, to stop it. That's also the reason why the Atlantis is not there anymore, like they, they are gone. So I was surprised, two attempts and we're still here. So at this time, I know all the Galactic, uh, the, the Galactic Federation, the Earth World, really want the ascension to happen. Um, and also, even if it's going to take a little bit longer, uh, it's going to happen. And actually, it's because the Mother Earth, the, uh, yes, Gaia, wants actually to clean everything that happened since uh, a long time here on Earth the negative things, the, the war, the pollution, everything. And we, actually, uh, the Earth received uh, some code, energy code, activation code. So that's also the reason why we, as a human being, we receive that energy, that cleaning, and we are kind of, um, we are feeling the energy that we're going to talk about it a little bit later. And uh, it's not actually that we are changing a planet. We are going to another planet or our body is going, you know, somewhere else. It's really actually inside of us. Uh, that's what uh, ascension is. Uh, we are just changing our vibration is going up. Uh, it's just the density that we are changing. So I don't know what, how, what can you say about that too, Caroline? on your side. Right, um, well, ascension is a process, as Beverly's just said, it comes from within. Um, there are stages to ascension, and we will probably do another chat on the Great Awakening, but waking up is one of those stages to ascension. Um, ascension is a process whereby we have physical changes in our body as we heal and reintegrate aspects of our DNA. And those aspects of DNA have based in duality and dumbed down by what we call the darkness or the cabal or groups of um, negative alien factions that have been here on this planet. And this is why the past two ascension cycles didn't work because the darkness and the miasma from the um, black holes was still present in this atmosphere and we couldn't ascend. Um, what that means for us as individuals is as our conscious awareness and expansion um, mentally um, grows in terms of what has happened to us as a species, how we have been suppressed and repressed, how our DNA has had restrictions and limitations placed upon it through light and sound codes. And we've in essence lost our power and been enslaved for many years by negative alien factions, as bizarre as that might be sound if you don't know anything about aliens and what's happened in this war. Um, but we've come to a point now where that darkness has been removed. Um, we are unslaved from the Orion Hive Queen. Um, that has freed up our mental chains, if you like, so we can now access 3D light codes coming through the central sun. Um, in terms of our body, this means we have access to fully heal the rainbow bridge of our DNA. And in a sort of our dimension, if you like, of 3D, we're now moving up into a 4D, 5D ascension. So with this new awareness and knowledge, this manifests as med beds for healing that may come out in terms of a new technology. And we will also um, be returning to um, 1776 constitution of the original American constitution, which protects all of humanity from being fooled again by dark forces. Um, so 
we're basically resetting our DNA, but this changes us as people, and this comes from expanded consciousness. It's a process of healing for humanity. Humanity has sort of forgotten that they have many powers beyond the ones that we know. We quite often live a life that's eat, sleep, repeat in many respects. And we're going back to opening up our DNA to gain the full powers that humanity was always meant to have in the way we were actually created and designed by cedar races. Um, yeah, so that's it in a nutshell. It's quite a complex subject and there are many tangents to yeah. a sense. Exactly, exactly. There is a lot to uh, there is a lot to share actually uh, in different aspects. Uh, now we are just talking about the energy that is changing. The like you say, like you mentioned, Caroline, the DNA, and also we as a human, we need to heal uh, the pain that we had in the past. We need to forgive. We, there is a lot of change that we need to do to be able to. Uh, to ascend also and I'm not sure if everybody is going to ascend because we have uh, each person have his own contract also each person have choice to to choose to see if they want to ascend if they want to learn about what we are talking about actually so uh, but it's going to take time so it's not something that is going to happen overnight but i felt since the beginning of this year 2023 things are speeding up i don't know if you guys felt that yes. <laughs> things have sped up so much it's just unbelievable how quickly they're moving at the moment if i sat here and explained it you'd think i was nuts so i won't but yes things have absolutely <laughs> at full speed this year um, in terms of healing let's go back to that subject about how we integrate aspects of self um, yes. Everybody has experienced trauma in their lifetime one way or another, whether that's from an abusive relationship or an abusive childhood or addictions or anything along those lines. And as we go through a set of leaving duality behind, and what that means is that we have to forgive ourselves internally and forgive those externally because we create our own worlds through our own manifestation of thought process. And if we don't heal ourselves from within, we're still carrying darkness and we can't take that with us as we go up through the densities into lighter densities. Um, Katie can talk about how this manifests in a sort of physical way as physical pains within the body as well. And you can release those physically, um, which I know Katie does through yoga and um, other forms of healing, which can help kind of combine and heal mentally but it is a process of self-forgiveness and we call that enlightenment as you forgive those dark things within yourself mm -hmm. it really gets lighter in stages yeah does that make sense absolutely yeah so it's a process as beverly says you can't do it overnight it doesn't just happen like that um it's it's a self-awareness, it's a sort of introspection, if you like, and meditation will really help with this as well. But as and when you know you get triggered, if you get upset for no reason, for example, because you're, or perhaps because you're recalling an argument that you may have had with a family member or something that pains you internally, those are the sorts of things we need to release to help us going through the ascension process. Um, the other side of it is ascension symptoms. Um, Katie, do you want to talk a bit about ascension symptoms people may be experiencing? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned about the, the beginning of this sort of ascension process for individually is when we wake up. So that mm. was for me about 18 months ago with a bit of a bang. Um, and I didn't really know about ascension or sort of third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension. So um and and as as soon as i sort of learned about it i just went all in because i just found it fascinating and it all really resonated with me um uh, but as my consciousness sort of expanded as i learned these new truths uh, the good and the bad um i physically felt um flawed you know there were times when i could hardly move um it took quite a while for me to feel the 
really light energy um, that I now feel, um, and I'm elated when I do feel that, but I, you know, my legs hurt, my knees ached, um, all around sort of inside my uterus was really, really sore. I felt like it was almost falling out. Um, I got the sort of chest pains, palpitations, um, and I mean, there were a couple of weeks when I really, I almost felt quite paralysed, actually, from um, things. I, I would lie down and, you know, my son had gone to school and I would sort of like lie there, not moving for a few hours, just so I could get the energy so that when he came back, he didn't think that I was, you know, ill or nuts or anything like this. And I've got to say, I'm really glad that I, I, re I learned that it was essential, so I didn't panic that it was something else. So, I, okay. and in yeah. a way, the more, um, the more I felt physically, I also knew that my DNA was upgrading. So that actually, it, I almost welcomed it. It was, it was part of a process. Um, and I didn't then go and, you know, take any pharmaceuticals or something to try and numb this. I just tried to breathe through it. Lots of water really helped. Sun gazing really, really helped. Um, and it for me it tended to go up my body from my feet to my legs, hips, okay. um, until I sort of almost felt like I was being strangled. And that's when I sort of started thinking of or getting memories of past lives as well coming through of perhaps <coughs> how I'd passed before, and a lot of that was to do with throat. Um, and then the, the sort of throat chakra is sort of about truth. Um, and I was, I think the best piece of advice I'd been given really around that time was, because I was still in quite a bit of shock from waking up, was to um, step into joy. So I didn't really know what that meant, um, because I couldn't really remember, to be quite honest, but I knew what the opposite was, and that was fear. So it was anything that was causing fear to come out of that and that helped me align with joy. So um, that's how I sort of managed all of this. And, and a lot of these symptoms then passed. And I found myself starting to dance more. I was listening to really good frequency music, like 432 hertz. Um, often my symptoms, um, physical symptoms, matched the um, Schumann resonance that was going on so that the more light that was coming through the more I felt or if it was quite flat the earth energies then perhaps I felt quite flat and it must have been about six months after sort of the, the beginning of this for me um, that my son then started having these symptoms and again thank goodness I knew what was going on because they also matched mine they went from the ground up almost like rising up the chakras but um you know, it, it meant I was a lot softer with him. I didn't think, you know, maybe maybe before, a couple of years ago, I'd have been sort of pressurising him to do something or, come on, we've made this plan. or And it was like, well, no, you know, if he's feeling anything like I did, I've just got to give him space, give him love. Um, I stopped yeah. reacting so much to if he was misbehaving and I sort of took a step back. So there was a lot of observing as well um and it it brought us closer together so i'm just really glad that i i sort of knew what was what was happening on a physical and an emotional level really um, that's very helpful to yeah. know yeah if we share that with other people as well so if you are having symptoms and you don't really know what's happening in your body and you're worried that you might be ill, there is a possibility that you're clearing out trauma. Trauma manifests quite often as physical pain and symptoms. This is, um, for example, emotional pain and trauma can quite often block your sinuses and give you intense headaches because emotional trauma is carried in sinuses. Um, so if you're having sinus pains and a lot of headaches, it means that you've got emotional trauma to clear. And there are parts of the body that relate to certain specific pains. Um, my ascension symptoms are always heart palpitations and a lot of lower back pain. And there are certain traumas that you can go through in life, which help kind of can give you the experience of physical back pain. So you'll find as you're clearing and working through forgiveness of yourself and others that these pains will come out and manifest. 
but they do clear and it doesn't necessarily mean there is anything wrong with you it just means that your body is recalibrating to become more crystalline and what that means is that it all has to come out because you can't take it with you lower emotions such as fear and anger and jealousy and hate and those sorts of lower frequency emotions can't come with you to the higher dimensions ascension in many respects means that we're returning to love and we feel that from our hearts um, and we connect on the hearts and you will find people coming kinder to you around you people are more loving and generally families are getting on better because they, they've forgiven themselves and others and they're starting to see people's higher soul connections rather than being in judgment and fear with their minds they're starting to operate from love and it's a very different way of being a way of using your heart more and way of being present in the moment and enjoying the time that you have rather than judging or criticizing all of these sorts of old ways of doing things we're leaving behind us as we go through the ascension process and become enlightened we're literally moving into becoming beings of light beautiful yes mm. for sure and and some of the symptoms also uh, i would say for me is uh, being tired yes mm -hmm. i'm so yeah. really really tired like any moment during the day i'm really tired so when i can i try just to close my eyes for maybe 30 minutes just to rest and in such a time, I was also feel like I'm not fitting in, you know, like I'm not belong here, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. It, it felt strange, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like we, when you talk about it like that, it's like, OK, where are you from? <laughs> you know, absolutely. But that's the, well, even when I remember that's... when my son said to me, I, I can't feel my feet now. I knew what he meant. He was trying to walk down the stairs and he was almost scared because he was Sorry. losing almost his balance. He didn't, you know, that proprioceptive um, awareness where you are in space, he'd lost it. Mm -hmm. And and I sort of helped to guide him down the stairs. And, you know, I, I, I was smiling inside because I knew what was going on. And I was like, and I was able to tell him, do you feel like your feet are missing? Yes, I feel, where have my feet gone, mum? You know, and he's only 12 and it, it was um it was really sweet um and but i i know what you mean about the tiredness a lot of people i've had it a bit but not so much but the ringing in the ears as well a lot of people get yeah. a very high pitched ringing um and the tiredness got me so much that i am used to doing physical job physical practice with yoga but I, I literally would just lie there and maybe just lie on the ground and stretch. It wasn't, there was no extra energy for <laughs> any power yoga, but it was still yoga. It was still awareness and breathing, and but there was l not a lot of movement, to be quite honest. <laughs> I know what That's you mean. And losing his awareness, that happens to me after meditation. I literally, um, tried to put a drink down on the side miss the side it went all over the floor and then walked into the door I just it takes me five minutes to get back fully grounded <laughs> after I've done a meditation I lose all 3d awareness um, I think that's a common symptom as we go through this process um, but, but for anyone listening who doesn't really fully understand what ascension is it is a process of losing your connection to those lower lower energies really so we're talking about letting go of fear and surrendering really to higher level energies and you do that through letting go in a form of self-forgiveness um it can be a process where you can be out and about and one day an emotion can just overwhelm you and you don't even that emotion necessarily to a specific thing that's happened in your life at that current time and that's because you're bringing up trauma from the past and it could even be from past lives as well in other dimensions that you've lived because as we go through ascension we're sort of pulling all aspects of our soul self back into the one person into one united whole because we're moving away from duality so sometimes you might be healing things and you may just have to sort of cry it out and you may not know specifically what event that relates to in your life mm -hmm. and that's are you being said sorry no sorry carry mm -hmm. on yeah, no, I was saying also you feel sad, but you don't know wh why, actually. Yes. Because yeah. there is a detachment. Yeah, this is why it's yeah. crucial 
to understand what's going on. So when you have emotions that come out of nowhere, you don't think you're going mad, or when you have heart palpitations, possibly, or sort of perhaps the skin symptoms or something else that's not normal for your body. And your body um, obviously, if you're concerned, then go and see your GP as you would in any normal circumstance. But also consider the fact it could possibly be ascension symptoms, especially if you've been working on clearing out emotional trauma from your, your own body. Yeah, I certainly yeah. found that um, forgiveness was huge. And I, I, I had a lot of forgiving to do. Um, you know, forgiving myself, um, but also forgiving others. And what I, I, I think I'd come to a point where I just accepted that some of these things had happened and it was like, okay, but to actually then go back and visit something and forgive, forgive the situation, forgive the person and forgive how I might have reacted. Um, and there were quite a few things and I'm sure there were more that I need to, to work on, but it was so liberating once done and I would just like to share that with anyone that you know we we do have these soul contracts or I believe we have these soul contracts and we wrote our script before we came here to give us pointers of how we can grow and evolve and rise, raise in consciousness and awareness so when you're looking at it like that and you realize that actually you one very likely made these situations happen then it's a lot easier to forgive and to send it love and with that your vibration rises and then that's a spiraling effect so that we can ascend up through the dimensions um so that was just really really powerful for me uh i thought maybe acceptance was enough but i think forgiveness to allow the heart to open um, is, is really, really powerful because we can get a little bit stuck, you know, at, at this sort of heart level. And um, I was even advised to, on my water jug, to write love because that's going to raise the vibration of the water that I'm bringing in. You know, all these little things just to um, support us through this process of letting go and um yeah stepping stepping more into the heart space yeah you talked about I agree with you Katie yeah pardon I say I, I agree with you because when you forgive it's like there is something happening in actually inside you when you forgive the person you forgive yourself it takes time before you realize it, but it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. You feel really lib liberated. Yeah, the darkness have put negative implants within us, and what they do is reverse the electromagnetic spin of the toroidal field, all of our organs. So when you are forgiving, you're breaking those electromagnetic bonds of the heart, and that's what's giving us the heart palpitations. You're literally snapping electromagnetic bands that have literally enslaved your soul if you like and that, that's part of the ascension process um part of what katie was talking about earlier in terms of raising your kundalini energy up from your feet first and opening your chakras as well all of that is part of ascension because it's helping rebalance and restore our dna which is also called a rainbow light bridge and that rainbow light bridge makes us twisted. It's the Christ, it's the Crystalla spiral rather than the Kabbalah spiral. They are different. And the Kabbalah one is missing the top aspects of self. And these selves we call the cubed consciousness or the Christ consciousness of the Godhead. And this cubed consciousness is a positive thing. It's a being of light, which contains our macabre field spins in terms of our energy and what we're doing is resetting ourselves literally into the higher dimensions as we go through ascension and um, that's probably getting a bit technical um, but there is a practical application um, obviously of what we're doing that has a physical manifestation and it's so important to do this at this current time because our planet literally is splitting energetically we have a 3D world, which is where we go to work and we go to bed and we eat food and we do our daily mm. 
We're moving up to a fourth dimension, which is when we awaken to what's happened with various things going on in the world. We learn the truth, and the truth is often not mm-hmm. what we was. And yeah, and that's a 4D manifestation. But there's also a full ascension, which is a spiritual sort of ascension, if you like, where the planet has an etheric higher light overlay, and that light overlay is literally separating from the 3D planet. And those who vibrate at a higher level of frequency within themselves will align with that higher overlay. Those that don't will stay with the 3D planet, which is probably not where anyone wants to be in the future. And then for most people in the middle, they will go to a 4D balance and they will be able to um, continue their soul evolution with help from beings who are enabled to hold the light who already fully ascended. So there's a lot going on in the sort of technical aspects of ascension as well. But the best individually that you can do for yourself is learn to forgive and love, really, and raise your vibrations up as much as you can. Beverly, are you there? We've lost you at the moment. No, I think for now we've lost Beverly. Katie, is there anything else you want to say while Beverly comes back on? No, I, I'm just, I'm just taking it all in. I'm, I'm so, still learning, but um, yeah, I just love listening to you. And it's quite interesting. It's... There's so many aspects to ascension at the moment. Um, I think for a lot of people who aren't awake, we definitely need to have a chat about the Great Awakening and what that is as well, and the whole process because that ties in with ascension at the moment. Um, But it it is enough to know that people are changing and these symptoms are very, very physical and they're very real as well. Um, Knowing why you're having them and what's going on planet wide. It's not just us. It's everybody on the entire Earth that's being hit with these light codes from the central sun and they affect our DNA. And that's essentially what's causing all this. But going back to the trauma that we're talking about clearing earlier, when you go through trauma in this life or other lives or past lives, it's held within the cellular structure of your body. So every cell in your body holds the full memory of that trauma. So clearing that trauma can cause physical symptoms. Again, that's another thing that you need to be aware of. So once you're clearing those out, inevitably your body's sort of having a reset. So aches and pains are quite common as we go through this. We did a video previously on grounding, talking about how to help with some of these techniques. And that can really help if you're going through ascension symptoms. Definitely. Well, Beverly hasn't... Um, Caroline, are you there? I can hear you. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Are you back? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, I had a question. When you say that... uh, we feel some pain, uh, some pain uh, physically. Uh, yes. So there is a headache, and there is a. Uh, I know some people have a stomach problem. Is it possible? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, a lot of diarrhea or constipation, or just abdominal pain. Um, a lot of people, the the weight changes as well. A lot of people tend to lose quite a bit of weight, especially at the beginning. Um, and you know, that can be quite worrying for some if they're already quite slim. Um, you know, and and, uh, and then a lot of people then tend to feel, or I have heard that they can then put it back on as well. Um, but we are we are moving towards this light body, and um, I think losing weight is one of the uh, sort of let's call it a symptom or an effect that that ascension um, does have. And then uh, pain between the eyebrows as well is is one of them, or tingling on top of the head. I quite like that one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people get <laughs> sort of stomach rashes, or even think maybe some women that they're having an early menopause as well. Hot flashes, um, uh, restless, uh, restless sleeps as well. Okay. Yeah, but many nausea and diarrhea and sickness are quite common symptoms as we go through ascension and they can hit you Uh, up. Yes, exactly. And I realised also that uh, it's been three three years ago. I hear 
I'm able to know that people here in the same room. Could you repeat that, Beverly? You're cutting in and out a bit. Yes. Okay, sorry. I can hear some noises in the, you know, in the room somewhere, but the people in the same room than me cannot hear it. Uh, That's interesting. Uh, I, like, yeah, you know, I, I've been hearing, um, I've had knocking on the door quite a few times and there's no one there. And also, um, sometimes when I'm like studying something quite important, I might hear my name and I'm wondering whether that's a distraction, but my son's been getting it as well, um, okay. that he's hearing things. So he doesn't really hear it when I hear it and I don't hear it when he hears it. But I, I, yeah, Beverly, I, I can understand what you're, you're saying because that's been happening to me. Yeah. Or sometimes you see like something pass, you know, on, your, on the corner of your eyes, you see like a shade or something. Yeah, this yes. is extension. We're developing um, sort of latent skills or giftings, if you like, and um, ex sort of perception changes. You can start seeing colours in a different way. Um, start seeing people's auras if you don't see those already. Um, you may find um, that you're seeing lights, different colours as well. But seeing beings or flashes on the corner of your vision is quite common as you start seeing to other dimensions as we do this. Um, hearing sounds, I. I hear a lot of sounds because I'm clairaudient, but I hear bells a lot as well. And the reaches of conversation that are leeching in through other dimensions that you can't quite work out what they're saying, but they're there. But sometimes I just hear very loud comments and conversations. And you start to understand that these are skills that you're developing. And you may find that you're becoming telepathic as well. And the psychic ability is sort of increasing yeah. as well. Um, yeah. And intuition growing or you're learning to trust your intuition more. And then that, um, you know, or knowing that someone's going to call before they do, those sort of things that maybe happen before, they're, they're sort of it's speeding up or getting a lot more, you know, regular, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. And I think also because sometimes we can say it's a symptom, but sometimes it's just, has, has a human being who are evolving actually yes. because we are we are finding a new the gift that we had that we didn't realize like a clair, a clairvoyance and everything so it's difficult to 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 see both no don't you think between yes. the symptoms and really actually you know the new gift that you have the symptoms that you receive more sort of painful the giftings are either latent giftings that you've had and as your dna is recalibrating reactivating activating um less restrictions on your dna and your telomeres and your dna is just working better um this also ties in with opening your pineal gland which we haven't talked about but that is part of ascension and as that opens you get to kind of go vertical if you like you get to go straight up and you get to connect to it, um, who could also be called source or God or prime creator or whatever name you want to give spirit. But spirit is essentially your higher self that is guiding you from beyond the veil of illusion, we call Maya here. And that guidance can help you when you connect to it to ascend by giving you sort of nudges in the right direction. But it will also give you information and higher truth and a sort of inner sense of knowing, if you like, about what's true and what's not and that really ties into the fact that truth has a very specific resonance of its own it isn't a false light it's built on firm foundations and when everything else is gone truth will remain truth is light it's consciousness and in understanding that and knowing it as you start to go through these ascension symptoms is something that you will get better at doing and this really goes hand in hand with the great awakening which we'll talk about another time I agree, and uh, but for those who doesn't know about ascension, about all the great uh, awakening, when they have, when they, let's say they, they see things that they were not seeing before and or change, they might be afraid actually because they don't know, you know, because people tend to be afraid of the unknown. 
Yeah, it is difficult because, for example, if you're having heart palpitations and you've got no clue as to what's going on about ascension, you may think you're having a heart attack. Um, and that that is very scary. Um, the same if you're starting to see things out the corner of your eye, you may start to think you're losing your eye. You get crazy. <laughs> Absolutely, but it, these things as part of ascension are quite normal. Obviously, if you have known illnesses or any concerns, go and see a, a doctor by all means. Um, but also bear in mind, coming at you out of nowhere, not sure what's going on, you're starting to think, hang on a minute, I'm seeing colours around people. You know, the, the sort of thoughts are coming in my head about when I see them, I didn't know. These could well be ascension giftings that are coming online. I mean, I, is, would I be right in saying that, I mean, not in all cases, and, you know, obviously some, some of these are going to um, occur in, in some people that don't have an awareness of raising consciousness, but my inner standing is that the more we increase our light through, um, through raising our consciousness, through learning new truths, um, then we are going to ascend more. So I would hope that um, it, it it's almost goes hand in hand that the the more the let's say the more physical symptoms that you have, you're tuning in more with with Gaia and and, and Earth energies. So maybe or hopefully that would make you inquisitive to then maybe look or you might have a friend that you you know you can mm -hmm. ask Absolutely. some of these things are going to go and 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 sort of happen and may shock you um but if if you know a little bit you might because you are ascending and your dna is switching on it it would hopefully lead you along this path to maybe find a video like this to listen to or an interview or you know find a meme that might explain it um does that make sense at all yes definitely yeah um, if anyone wants to know more i'm sure beverly can post the link to some of the channels that we're involved in as well on telegram which may have um interesting exactly. information and the symptoms and um how you can help yourself we have a health channel as well as a, a school channel which has information on the scent ascension and symptoms and lots of truth information as well um so yeah lots of interesting sources that if you want to learn more you can access those and find out one information that i would like to add also about the ascension is um because people m probably ask how how it, does it happen who's you know who's helping the ascension and I found out it's actually uh, Archangel Metrato, who's uh, actually leading the ascension with, of course, all the galactic, the Archangel, the ascension master. And here on Earth, we have uh, the angel, the light worker, uh, like us, <laughs> I will say that we're trying to actually spread the information, try to guide people and everything. So we are all, all in this to be able to help for the ascension. But it comes really from uh, from above. That's what I wanted to say. Any yeah. input uh, on your side, Caroline? We, yeah, we have um, different groups who are all helping with ascension. As you've mentioned, we have archangels who are here helping um, in a very practical sense. Um, we have um, practical celestial beings who are here helping as well. Uh, we have superheroes who are helping. Um, our stars who are helping. We have light workers who are helping. We have many, many non-terror um, groups helping, such as the Pleiadians, the Arcturians, and many, many other species who are here, um, some of whom are above in ships on the other side of the veil, but we are loved by so many and we are here to help you all ascend. We're not leaving anyone behind. We came here to help because we love you all and this is our mission. We're here simply out of love to help Terra ascend and everyone on Terra who chooses that as part of the soul contract. 
So there are many, many beings here from all over this galaxy and beyond who are here to help. I agree, and I find that so heartwarming. And it's been a year now that I've started to see the ships. And um, as my frequency rises, you know, I've seen more. And that is just, you know, it just gives you so much faith and hope and excitement. But what I have noticed is... Um, since I've been connecting more and more with the light workers and star seeds um, around the world, is that we're all spread out. Um, so there, there isn't, um, there isn't really. It's not like we're in clusters, and that makes sense because the more of us that are switching on, then the more we can help and switch on someone else. And it's having this like domino effect, or like we're 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 lighting up this light net. Um, so as, you know, Caroline says, you know, the, we're all switching on and no one's going to get left behind. And we were all placed in a, in a, in a certain place for a reason. And I've recently learned that even in our soul contract that we awaken at a, a specific time, it's encoded in our DNA as to when, um, we wake up, uh, to, you know, ra raising our consciousness and, going through this ascension process so all very exciting it is everyone have, have his own time sorry caroline every everyone no. have his, has has his own time actually so we shouldn't judge the the one who's not awake yet it's gonna happen yeah. and it's going to happen very soon because things are really changing fast so and there is more and more light you know, around the world, it's not just, you know, a few, few places. Absolutely. And people who I would say are, are very much, um, let's say, asleep to a lot of this raising consciousness and, and what we're talking about, they can say things like, wow, the sun is brighter or, you know, they're noticing things like, oh, you know, I've got, I've got more fruits and flowers than I did the year before, the year before that, or, you know, th things just feel different or, um, you know, a lot of my group of friends have sort of like sort of just left me a little bit, but I feel better about that because I wasn't really aligned with it. So um, I've, I've noticed that in a lot of my, my friends um, or, or just randomly chatting with people in the street or the neighbors which which is exciting. So people are noticing. That's the thing. Lots lots of things are shifting. You may find that you naturally friends that you've had for a long time or family members that you naturally feel a disconnect to them. If you're doing the work and raising your vibration and they're not, at some point you become disharmonious. And you may find that means that friendships end or you're finding it more difficult to get on with family and friends. And that's a natural part of this process. Ascension is you. It's about you raising your vibration, essentially. And everyone else has free will. We live in a free will universe and they make those choices for themselves. And some may come with you. But what I can guarantee is you will meet new people. You will meet your new family on your own levels of vibration. Definitely. As the yeah. three of us have here. So be open to change as you go through this process. That's very, very important. And love yourself, no matter who you are and what you've been through. Love yourself from your heart. It's very important. That's nice. Yes. Oh, that was great. I don't know if uh, there is anything to add. We will probably do another video uh, more deeper uh, for the ascension because this is really just the basic, just to start. So people know a little bit what what is about. Um, anything that you guys want to add? No, Beverly, that's great. Thank you. No, I think that's fine. We can have more next time. 